Good morning. We're starting today on Physics 1, Chapter 1, and the textbook asks the question, what is physics? So an overview of the chapter, introduction, we'll talk about basic laws of physics, mainly what is a law, how we get laws, and then we'll look at the scientific method. Uh, this will be somewhat correlated with the uh, laboratory uh, questions and then we'll summarize. Okay, we have laws. Laws of gravity, for example, uh, you drop an apple from the tree, it'll fall on the ground. In a space shuttle, um, there is zero gravity, so people can float around, <laughs> whatever. But uh, that still obeys the law of gravity. What's a law of science? <clears throat> Isaac Newton or somebody who looks like him. Uh, it's not just a good idea, it's the law. Well, what do we mean by a law of science? Now, in real life, we make laws and rules by voting. People meet, whether it's a city or county council or state legislators or the federal government, the House of Representatives or the Senate. And they make laws. They say, well, we think there should be a law that says uh, we can only drive so fast on federal highways. Or we think there should be a law that allows people to uh, get money for a certain thing. So they pass these laws. And it's a complicated process. But we can change the laws. Now, we don't do that with science. We discover the laws of science. We find out what has already been put into place in the natural world. We study the world around us and then we learn how everything works and eventually if things work the same way enough times we consider that a law. Okay, this requires what we call the scientific method. Now this is not a cookbook process but uh, give you some idea of how scientists go about things. First you observe something. You see something happening and then you ask the question, hmm, why did that happen? And you form a hypothesis. Actually you form several hypotheses to try to explain what the situation was. You then develop experiments that will allow you to test your hypothesis. You collect the results. And then you draw some conclusions as to what things mean. Okay, let's, uh, let's take an example. Here's an ice cube. We sit that ice cube out on the table and I come back and what's happened? There's a pool of water, a little, little bit of ice cube there, but mainly a puddle of water. So I form a hypothesis. Actually, you need several hypotheses. You can't just go down one path because it doesn't allow you to really prove what's going on. So one hypothesis is, well, somebody spilled the water that's on the table. Another hypothesis, ah, the ice cube melted. <clears throat> A third hypothesis, and <laughs> this is quite often in families, it's my little brother's fault or it's my little sister's fault. They made the mess. So we run experiments. We design experiments that allow us to test the hypotheses. Somebody spilled water. I set out another ice cube and I watch it. The ice cube melted. I set out another ice cube and I blow hot air on it. It's my little brother and sister's fault. I set out another ice cube and then I keep my eye on my little brother or sister to see if they're messing with it. Okay, these are experiments, and each one of them will test a specific hypothesis. Then you collect results. Okay, the experiment, somebody spilled water. I set out another ice cube, and I'm keeping a real close eye on it. Water forms, but there's nobody there to spill the water. Hmm. The ice cube melted. I set out another ice cube and blow hot air on it. The hot air made the water form faster. Mm-hmm. It's my little brother or sister's fault. I put out another ice cube and keep an eye on my little brother and sister. Well, we get water, but your brother or sister was in the other room the whole time, so they couldn't have messed with it. Then we draw conclusions. Water was not spilled, 
So hypothesis one is falsified. The brother or sister did not bother the ice cube, so hypothesis three is falsified. The ice cube melted faster when heated, so hypothesis two has some evidence to support it. Now we haven't really proven it, but we at least have eliminated two possibilities and we're working down on the third one. Now we need to do more experiments to study this whole thing about melting ice cubes. Okay, what we've talked about, physics studies how things move and behave in nature, and we're going to look at different ways that goes about in chapters to come. The laws of physics are precise statements of how things behave, and quite often they're expressed in mathematical terms. The laws of physics are determined using the scientific method. And these are the steps of the scientific method, observation, hypothesis, experimentation, collecting results, and drawing conclusions. Okay, that's it. So thank you for being a part of the class, and we'll be talking to you later.